Okay, so this is a, a short video talking about how to do the linearization, linearization of nonlinear systems. So um, here's a basic setup for the for a given nonlinear system, which is given by x dot t is f x t y f x t u t and y t is g x t u t. So it's a very standard uh, form for uh, uh, a linear system, including the x t is a state, y t is output, f and g are Nonlinear function. There could be a set of function, like a, a vector of functions. So typically, to linearize a system, we have to talk about the nominal state, nominal uh, input, and nominal output. So the nominal means is some state we know. If we give some input, uh, we can obtain the output and obtain the state. Okay. So and of course, based on a given initial state. So if I draw a picture over here. Uh, given initial state x0 and given nominal state u sub t, then by following this differential equation defined by the nonlinear systems, uh, we can, if we can find the x tilde t, which is a nominal state, and the output, output y, uh, nominal output y sub, y sub t, now we can do the linearization. Now, how can we do that? The linear resistance says if we define if we can get the nominal state uh, nominal state and nominal out based on the given initial state and given nominal input, and we can define the the change of the control input which is u delta, the change of a state which is x delta, and the change of output y delta. The change is basically defined as the difference between the current ut and the nominal ut state is given by the current state and the nominal state and uh, the y data is the current state minus the nominal uh, output so linearizing says the change of x data the change of y data satisfies this linearized equation meaning that if we give a small change of u data now the output as a state of x delta satisfies this linear differential equation which can be still time varying and the y out the output the change output is also determined by a linearized uh, equation over here again the ct and, and dt can be time varying in particular my at bt ct and dt they are determined by the jacobian which is essentially the calculation of a set of partial derivatives then evaluated at x tilde y u tilde t for all at b t c t and d t okay here i'm going to talk about uh, one example so that you know the whole process how to compute that okay so the example i give you is uh, the two set of dif nonlinear dif uh, differential equations the x1 dot is 2x2 squared times ut. x2 dot t is ut minus 1 times x1 t times x2 2 t. So apparently this is a nonlinear function because this is a nonlinear one. It has squared and it has a product, so it's a nonlinear one. We can here interpret this as f1 as the first function as f1, the, sex, as the right side and the second function equation as f2. So essentially we have f a nonlinear function here to be a column, uh, um, a, a, a vector, a vector or a column, um, a row, a, a set of functions including f1, f2. And my y sub t is x1t plus x2t, so which means my gt is x1 t squared plus x2t squared. Okay, so the gt is a scalar. So ft is um, a vector of functions. Okay, and again we give the we have to give the nominal control input and uh, also my initial state. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the first step is I have to figure out what is the x tilde t and the y tilde t. So for nonlinear system, we, which may not be feasible for all the solution, if we can find all the solution for all the normal the input and initial state, which means we don't have to solve the we don't have to linearize it because I already know the solution. The reason we find the nominal one, which is the nominal, because the nominal can nominal easy to find the solution of the x to the t and y to the t. Okay, so 
Now, first step is to figure out what is the x utility and the y utility, so that we can com compute the the partial derivatives a t b t c t, uh, because we need to x tilde and u tilde. Okay. All right. First, start with x tilde t. So, because x tilde t and y tilde t, they are nominal solution. They should still satisfy the original differential equation, right? Which is given by these two equations. F these two equations. So then we naturally we have two differential equations given by x one to the t dot, which is two x to the t to the replace every here x by x to the u by u to the y by y to the that's what we do u to the t and x two to the dot t is u to the t minus one x one to the t x two to the t also we have y to the t is x1 to the t squared plus x2 to the t squared here we go so the the computation of y t should be fairly easy because as long as we figure out what is x1 to the t or x2 to the t we can figure out y to the t so it's not a problem the problem is how do i figure the, the x1 to the t and x2 to the t so by looking at the u to the t over here which is a one Okay, the first one definitely is difficult because x1 to the t is based on the, although this is still one, but this guy we don't know, we have to solve for this one, okay. But looking at the second one, if u to the t is one, the nice thing here is this will be canceled out. So this will be zero, and it doesn't matter what x1 to the t and what two x2 to the t is, so this will be zero. So we start with the second one. The second one, so we use u to the t is one, so we get x2 to the t is this is one time minus one is zero right zero time whatever stuff over there it still gives us zero so this has to be derivative and so x2 because derivative is zero so x2 to the t has to be equal to constant so again we use the initial condition that I, we we have over here so x2 zero is one defined by initial condition so c must be equal to one in other words, we can say my x2 to the t is 1 over here. So as you can see, typical solution should be simple, easy to find. Otherwise, uh, we may not be able to find the solution, the nominal solution. Now we're going to work to the second step. We're going to compute this one, x1 to the t. Okay, x1 to the t dot is, now we already figured x2 to, to the t here, and u to the t is 1, so we can just substitute this x to the two to the t by the solution we got. It's two times x to the t x two to the t squared, which is one squared. So one is the solution here, and x u to the t is also one. Okay, it's given here. So the so the product will be just two, which means that x one to the t is because the derivative is two, so the solution is two t plus constant. Again, again we're using each condition x one zero equal to one. So I have here is c also must equal to one because when t is zero, so two times zero is zero. Zero plus c is c. C must equal to one, so c should be one. So I have x one to the t is two t plus one. Don't forget about the 2t because solution. I already figured out t is c, but you still have to include the 2t over there. That's the solution. Now I figured out the x1 t to the t and x2 t to the t. So y to the t is just like I mentioned over here x1 t to the t squared plus x2 to the t squared, which is this is one x1 is 2t plus 1 squared plus 1 squared, which gives us 4t squared plus. 40 plus 1 plus 1 so it's plus 2 okay so we done the first step the second step we have to compute the Jacobians which means I can compute a t b t c t d t okay so based on the partial derivatives I defined over here so as a matter of fact the partial derivative I'm going to write down the partial derivative ex explicitly so at is given by partial f1 and partial x1 
push f1, push x2, push f2, push x1, push f2, push x2. So you can have more, let's be x2. You can have more x, you can also have more y's. So this is you all have the, along each row, you always have the same push f1, all the way push 1. Then you change the derivative from push x1, push x2, until all the variables you have. And here you have push f2, push until you push fn, whatever function you have, okay. You have to evaluate at x tilde and u tilde and t. Is it x tilde, u tilde, so u tilde is already given, x tilde is what we calculate from here, okay. Okay, now let's take a look at the partial derivatives. Um, so here my, I write down the f1, what is the f1, what is the, the f1, so write down the f, he's over here, let's copy the f from here, from here, let's make a copy of that, and then we we'll put it over here so we can have a record of that, so let's move it over here, so we know what is f, okay. Alright, so let's compute that. So what is the push f? So push f, push f1 is this, right? It's given by, okay, hold on. Uh, I still have to do this, okay. Right over here, let's copy that. So I do have my f2, f1, so, so this will be just my f1, this is just f2, picking up this one. So take a derivative, this will be just push f1 is, because this is not a function of f1 so x1 so this is 0 push f1 over push x2 is 2 time because you can see ut has a constant right is 2x2t and ut push f2 over push x1 f2 is here push x1 is ut minus 1 time x2t because it all has a constant push f over push x2 is ut minus 1 time x1t don't don't forget we have to evaluate all this value x tilde and u tilde meaning that we have to replace everything x1 x2 and u by its tilde so which means this one has to be equal to 0 2 x2 tilde t u tilde t and u tilde t minus 1 x2 tilde t and u tilde t minus 1 and x1 tilde t okay so u to the t, what to figure out u to the t is, u to the is given, so u to the t is just 1, and x1 to the t is what we calculate already, is, is 2t plus 1, and u to the x2 to the t is also 1, okay, we replace all the values, okay, by Substituting all the values, what I get, so I get here is this first one is still zero, the second one the x two is one, so it's two times one, time x u to the t is also one times one, and this guy u to the t is one, so one minus one is zero, zero doesn't matter what I, what x two to the t is, so this is zero, this is also again it's also zero, so I have this one is zero two zero zero, so this is for eighty. Now my b sub t is push f1 push u because I only have one u so this is push f2 and push u okay which is push f1 push f push f1 push u is um, again f is here right push f1 over push u is just 2x2 squared 2x2t squared and push f2 push u is so this is a constant right so this guy derivative is push is one then time itself so it's x1 t x2 t 
so this is also evaluated as tilde u tilde meaning that i have to replace every scene x by its tilde so it's 2 x2 tilde t squared x1 tilde t and x2 tilde t so x2 tilde t is here is 1 so this is 2 times 1 squared is 2 x1 tilde times x2 tilde x2 tilde is 1 so x1 tilde is 2t plus so it's 2t plus 1 times 1 so it's 2t plus 1 okay now we compute ct ct is partial g over partial x1 partial g over partial x2 remember we just have one g and g is g is x1 squared plus x2 squared okay the right over here g is x1 squared plus x2 squared okay so if you take a partial derivative of that it just partial g over partial x1 is 2x1 t partial g over partial x2 is 2x2 t and divided at x tilde u tilde again you have to replace everything by its tilde so which is 2x1 tilde t 2x2 tilde t which is x1 tilde is um x1 tilde is 2t plus 1 so this is 2 times 2t plus 1 so it's 4t plus 2 this is 2x2 tilde t x2 tilde is 1 so this is 2 okay so let's see and d sub t is partial g of partial u this is only a scalar right because this is not a function of u so this is just scalar 0 now the third step is just write out differential equation the linearized equation which means I have x delta dot is a t x delta plus b t u delta and y delta is c t x delta plus d t u delta replace a t is 0 2 0 0 so this is 0 2 0 0 time x delta b t is 2 and 2t two plus 1 u delta this is 4t plus 2 and 2 x delta plus 0 times u delta so that's the linearized form